tester again? Well, you were on nitrous this time at least. You might have broke the transmission, bud. You might have broke the tranny, bud. What's the goal here? Well, we gotta cut out all of this material that compromised. We've got a good weld in there. We also want to cut out enough that we can get a good amount of filler material in there. You know, we don't want our we don't want our seam to be at the oh, at the height. Busting an exhaust valve off. I think we got a picture of that somewhere. She's laying in there sideways. Really didn't hurt too much. I mean, the whole chamber is not beat up and everything, but. You see how it pushed the meat over here? Yeah, it's all cracked in between the two. Yeah, so this all has to be down. taken out, built up with weld. Really, in through both sides needs to... Yeah. This is all going to come down quite a lot, and we'll start with some fresh material. And we'll have to put it on the seat and guide machine after we recut these receivers, and uh, pound some new seats into it, and then do a whole new valve job, a whole new valves, because we had... Uh, our pistons really weren't fly cut quite far enough. They look fine in the run stand, but we actually saw some shadowing when we took the head off. Pretty sure it compromised these valves. Those are Inconel probably, aren't they? Yeah. And anyway, we'll put all new valves in the head, both heads, I think, because one broken valve is enough. We kind of got away with it. It didn't hurt the cylinder at all. Yeah. It did the top of the piston just a little, but I mean, really, really got away with it pretty clean. So I think what we're going to do is we'll just fix this up and we'll change valves in both heads. Should be good to go. Fix the pistons. Well, I fixed this already. Fixed eight pistons. All right, fellas, there's two ways to go fast. You either learn to fix your old garbage and buy old garbage, or you have a lot of money. We don't have any money, so we learned to fix our old garbage. We showed you before. He was cleaning that up. You can never get it too clean, and I definitely didn't get it clean enough. I don't think you can ever get old stuff with hydrocarbons that have been burning in it clean enough to weld a little doing there is flooding it with gas just to kind of keep it clean you quit and just pump the pedal a little bit there's certain there's also certain cast aluminums that just weld better than others that's cast, actually not welding bad at all though no i had a little bit of stuff that came out originally but it yeah but once you boil the heat into it it seems to be pretty good yeah no that's it it's just trying to get a good base started here what i did is i ground a bunch of metal out from where my seat actually sits yeah so I'm putting some metal back in. I don't, you know, I don't really want my lamination layer to be at the same, you know, I don't want to cut my weld down to, to nothing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you want to go a little deeper. So I got some, some root in it. Yeah. And uh, we started pretty You high. cut out around this side over here. How come? Yeah, because it was all hammered and damaged. It was beat? Okay. So that's going to get, that. get a bead and that's going to all get filled on that side. Yeah. And right we'll, now I'm just trying to get that center filled in. And, and we'll recut that. And I got to burn over into this side of the so too bad of a welding job considering it had a valve broke off it it's not a very hurt head well and also it's it, it's not these weren't the greatest you know these are, these heads are never the greatest because they're always kind of crap i paid 750 dollars for them at the swap meet with shaft rockers on them. yeah no 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 i'm not paying for <laughs> the deal those heads new were like five grand are you mad at it actually of the process so really when you weld aluminum casting your your base aluminum is fairly hard material and your welding rod is usually softer than the base material the only way to really make those appear even would to be bang on the filler material smash the particles together but bang the particles together and also these love to make a little bit of porosity in the weld every once in a while. You get like a spot where it has a no metal kind of thing. Yeah. Just going around and, and just lightly painting the whole weld is going to close up any gaps. It's also going to condense the material. And then you'll see if I was to not bang the metal, 
and I was to plane the head after or whatever. Yeah, you used to see quite a... You see a, a light material difference. Yeah. You see it's more porous. Like this, you pound this, and you're... Nine times out of ten, you won't even see your, your weld team at all. So this is, this is pretty industry standard. You do your weld, you clean your entire weld surface, and then we're going to be machining on a nice hard surface that's equal to the rest of the head. Everything should expand at similar rates. And You should say something motivational every time you hit it, like, you're going to win the race. You aren't going to break on the first pass. <laughs> That would work. I, I, that's motivational. I it's like that. Motivational for me. My money is not going to go to waste on this stupid race car. Uh, I'm not sure. That may be more fantasy than motivation. This is totally money well spent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's lie to ourselves every time we hit this. Sure. I mean, that is probably good enough for me. That's nice. So you're ready to start machining? Yeah, probably start, I'll start by putting the seats in. Yeah. And then I'll go from there on the, uh, on the grinding. American So I'm going to let that cool off. Well, we're going to have lunch. Got an interlocking valve seat. That's right. These are a nice cutter. Fully adjustable, you don't have a hundred different cutters like we used to. You just set it up in a jig and cut her. And bang some new seats in there. And Bob's your uncle. Just about. You get this little jig here. You set your cutter up with this. Damn you need. And then you got cutters for everything known to man. Imagine you could probably set up your valve seat cutter with this too, couldn't you? Handily, but you could. Well, it's mostly it's mostly for the seat cutting tool, I think. But it's what we use it for. Completely for the seat cutting. But you can see that that's uh that's gonna be good in your little Yeah, you can see where that weld was and stuff, so after we need cuts. He'll sort of cut it and that'll do half of that and just a little cleanup work with a burr. See this one's all set in. You can see where the weld sticks by a little bit. But again, we'll reach down in there with a there's a tool to cut down in the throat. That'll clean that right up. And a bit of burr work. And gently put the valve seat in. Yeah, these are always a bit more tricky because you have a dissimilar metal here too. Put this on your seat so you go. Yeah, the interlocking was. It's a bit more tricky in a way, but it really. If you find the old uh, setup we got for that, actually, it, it's easier. Uh, you drop a guide down in there and you run it over. It keeps it square, if we have the right. What I always like to do is I'll just really measure both parts. Let me just look and see if I can find that. I don't want it. It does keep it more square. Perfect, so we got seven thou press bits. This is exactly right on the mic. Clearly we have a hard time focusing on one thing around here. So now we're doing a valve job on these heads. Then we'll probably bring the other heads in and cut them to foot seats and the other repaired head. Yeah. But we'll do these heads up. This is an old set of Pontiac. Small block Chevy heads, old NASCAR heads. Pretty cool old things. No, that one. That one's one of scrapping. Let me see if I can get this out of the box one handed. You see those? Basically, an old set of Brodex. Um, kind of had something sort of like that on the car before. Just these ones, these castings are in a lot better shape. So I figured they'd make a pretty good head to throw on there. Plus a fresh valve job and everything. I think I had tweaked the valves in the other ones just a little bit. It sort of saw a 9,000 on a missed shift or a broken shifter. It never pulled exactly the same after. It uh, actually did whack one valve and bend one. And I pulled the head off and changed it. But um, 
He didn't. He just. It just wasn't quite the same. It wasn't bad, but uh, I think this way we'll have something all fresh. We can freshen up the other heads that were on that and put some new valves in those another time. But this is just an old school 350. I'm doing up, redoing up. I had it in the car before. I did a. If you look back at my 57 videos, I did a 10 second passes with it there one day in my street car. It was this engine, but it was uh, it was getting a little tired. Those rings had been in it for years and years and years. I got these total seal now, um, the gas ported ring. So I'll throw them in and I'll put these rods on it because I had a mixed match set of rods in that motor. I had uh, six powder forged Howard rods and uh, two of these other ones there, manly rods, I think they are. Yeah, I had two of those bad boys and then six of these. They actually weighed up pretty similar. It really didn't shake, but I'll put in eight the same. I'll keep using these old Vanolia pistons. These are pretty nice old piston. Very narrow ring, oddball ring pack, a little bit. I had to order a custom ring pack, but uh, we'll get her back together. It'd be pretty cool to have it back going again. But that old motor, we've got a lot of history of that engine. In dirt cars, and Ty's race car was one of his first good engines. And now it's been in my street car, so it's, <laughs> we can't quit using it. So right here what we're doing is our lowest angle in our valve job. Let's see, we did this one here. So that's our 75 degree throat cut. You can see here kind of what we're working with yeah, here you see how much smaller that is it doesn't do a hell of a lot good to put a bigger valve in and have that bottle and choke there. the shit out of it so you know that that just kind of opens us up a little bit and it does blend us into the head a little bit too it's going to actually save us yeah you're not going to do a whole hell of a lot save burr, us are you? a lot of burr work somebody did a bunch of work in these heads yeah they've kind of hidden it now but it's yeah well i think maybe it was hidden for a reason that may have been a bug no-no back then I don't know these heads, what their rules were. I mean, GM sold them over the shelf for all kinds of different race applications. It didn't have to be NASCAR. Anybody racing the Pontiac could buy them for anything, but... A lot of the Chevy guys ran them too. They claimed they were a little bit better than the head Chevy head. I don't know why. I mean, they were a Brodex 10X head and not... I don't know, maybe that's just an old wives tale. I really don't know. I mean, they look cool with the Pontiac thing on them. Yeah, oh, I don't know what Chevy had though. Like, if they were, if they were running the 10X head back then, or what? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, don't know the answer to that. Maybe somebody knows the answer to that. Somebody's smarter than us. It's all, it's all mostly fellas my age or older that watch my videos, so. Probably somebody might know. If you do, Probably let us know. Probably somebody smarter than us, here, like. Yeah, I'm guarantee there's some out there. If we were smart, we wouldn't be doing this. These are the heads I had on it. They're really very close to the same head. These are slightly older, but uh, basically that same Brodex 10X head. And uh, Dash 8s. Dash 8s, these are. Right? Pretty much the same head, though. Yeah, a little bit older. Yeah, these. Those were, those were reported quite well. You can see that was like, that valve is, it's off the seat just a little bit in the center. It, it is been, it is been whacked. It is, this is not maybe too bad, but I'm sure if you put those on a grinder, you're going to see a little wobble in them. But, uh, but yeah, these heads here are actually pre-1979. They, uh, they don't have a serial number on them. So they claim that those are pre-1979. First, first rendition, I think, of the Brodex head. But, uh, yeah, these were ported nicely, though, and everything. We bought these for, like, a 100 bucks at Carlisle. And I don't think they had any valves in them or anything, did they? They didn't have any valves. They needed... Uh, yeah, the guides were all wore out and everything. They needed 16 guides. But, I mean, still, they weren't... Uh, like they weren't a bad buy, because we've done a lot of racing with those things for $100. I think I probably ended up with about 800 in them the time I got them all dressed out. Yeah, you should get that hot for Dejah Cam. Oh, 
See where it was damaged. Of course, new valves. Those are nice valves. But I mean, bear in mind, we've done all this crap since Friday. Like, we've been busy. This is Sunday. So the other engine got built. This head got fixed. The other head's got a valve job. And he got put in the car. And it's Sunday afternoon. So uh, we've been on the run, which is why we haven't been very good about doing video. But this is my car. I don't have time to work on my car. I made time. And it was the only way it was going to happen. And, uh, Unfortunately, there was, wasn't a whole lot of time to take anybody along for the ride here, but uh, we'll go for a test drive. We'll take you along for that. So let's try this. Here is my purge system. She runs up through there, right out the rocket. Let's see how it works. Why don't you jump in there and purge it? Crack, crack the bottle. It may be. Well, we got to see it. <laughs> uh, I learned to act my age someday. <laughs> All right, Junior had to modify it. <laughs> That's nice and cold. We probably wasted, we wasted enough nitrous. Well, it's the first time we're exiting the garage. What gear do you have in here right now? The 390s. I think we could do Bonneville in reverse. My way. Feel the clutch, don't you? Aggressively grip more and more, it's crazy. That's it's killer. Lower RPM. It's like a torque Get up there, 3500, Pretty locked, yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. 
Yeah, I drove through one of those. That's literally the size of line I drove through. That's why we had time to work on the car this weekend, because we didn't actually have power to work on the other stuff. That's a fact. Now we need to go get the race car and pull that motor out. Yeah, we do. What's she got for power down there at like 25? Good. Oh yeah. Sure, sure. Ain't no problem. <laughs> no, not really, really not. Like. No, it's sturdy. Wow, what a nice little rig. <laughs> of the time we're pretty well adjusted young men all the time <laughs> one percent gets you though you gotta try that new motor well, yeah no it, it it's smooth like it's smooth smooth it, it it's running very nice yeah it feels good it feels real good i'm curious to see it at the track kind of what it feels like because our cars feel really different in terms of this like you're i feel like you have a lot more Fork too, and the clutch helps a bit. And That's like slight detonation there on the hill when I stepped on a 2500. Yeah, I mean, lock timing at 36, you'll get yeah. that. Like, I think we got a little sweep in this thing, but in the, in the uh, MSD, I don't know. We can program one in for sure. I could pull oh, some timing out. What, what RPM did you check it at when you timed it? Was it idle? Was it idle? Did you rev it up? You didn't rev it up? I didn't rev it up. Yeah, I'm not sure. Or, uh, we did rev it up, it didn't change anything. Timing didn't move. I don't but remember what we had there. We can recheck it. We'll go in the grid and see what's what. But oh, she she runs real nice. Yeah, I'm pleased with it. Feels good. Nice to drive the old girl again. Well, it just feels good there, like 2100, whatever, you know. Like Next watch. <laughs> big time, eh? You you tell though it just comes up to an RPM it's where it's we happy. The shim out of that. Yeah, it was uh, real it loose used before. To do that. It's making more power. To me. I believe that. A lot more torque. I think this motor has more torque than the other motor. Which is weird because that's 50 cubic inches smaller. Yeah, but, but I had that really big cam in the other motor and it was not advanced. This one. Smaller cam and advanced. It's 600 lift and it's but it feels advanced. good for like a street rig. It feels fucking awesome. See how she feels at the drive. New Brunswick, Jesus. What's that? That truck was from New Brunswick. Uh, I think a lot of power out. Some guys spoke English, we gotta ask them when they thought they were gonna be done. Yeah, no kidding. Good. Yeah, it does. It feels really good. It's got a lot more torque than my car there. What? My car's a dog. Like, under five grand, my car's a dog. Like, this time at least. The one I broke. You might have broke the transmission, I bud. Don't have anything. You might have broke the tranny, bud. I think I might have broke that fucking jack shaft Oh. It was kind of a violent bang, whatever it was. Hang on. Sounds clutchy. Wait.
Well, we made it five miles, maybe. <laughs> Success. <laughs> Evidently, it makes plenty of power. It broke, you know, some very critical piece really fast. It oh. Didn't take long. Damn. It's too low to the ground for me to be able to see anything. So, I mean, it looks great, though. Double damn. It looks like awesome. If you were to just look at it. Oh, it threw the belt off, too. Everything's just so great. This is a fail. Can you tell what happened? I can't. I can't see it. I mean. Whomp, 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 I, whomp, whomp. The... I don't know why somebody would get so greedy. I don't know. I mean, like, what's the point of not trying? You're going to be putting a T10 in this before we're done here. Maybe. I have parts to fix this one. I don't know what actually happened here, but something has failed. I got a feeling that uh, clutch arm uh, is just stuck in. Well, can you go push the clutch? Something didn't feel right on this thing. Well, I can tell you what's mainly wrong here is your clutch stuff is hitting the header. That's what you're feeling is the bolt hitting the header. Are you, I take it you're in gear? Hmm. That sounds really, wait, can I look? The camera is gonna look at the, that's kind of what I'm looking for here. Okay, give her. It is not turning. So the problem is in the belt housing and transmission region. Okay, um, I'm gonna go get a vehicle Good. and a rope or a chain. Yeah, I'm not sure what is going on there. Got to crawl under it. He's not ready. I'm gonna go get my 56 and I'm gonna make a point of dragging his small block back home with the old LS machine. <laughs> 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 sorry, I'm sorry, Pa. Just I know it. RTV so you can just push it right in That's the what I'm thinking. There you go. The old training's just fine, so I have no idea what the hell's wrong with this thing. One thing I didn't do though, like a dummy, was actually check the shifter to see if it was shifting before I pulled it out. It feels all kinds of weird. But, uh, yeah. um, everything looks great here. Everything looks perfect. Everything turns perfect. You know, I mean, who knows? I mean, we're gonna know. I'm gonna try shifting it and just see if everything is good. But uh, let's do it together. I think it, is it in reverse now or is it? Oh, it's in it's, uh, third. There you go. Neutralis? Should be neutralis, yeah. It's fourth. Yeah, third. Or first and second, pardon me. I think I have training backwards. That's reverse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do first, second. Or third, fourth. See the way that works, there's no synchros in these, they just you got a, your dog ring drops into those notches. And yeah, she's just a male female action. That's why you can shift it so fast, it's also why it's quite clunky. You hear that when it goes in gear, you know? See, sometimes too, if you're in a parking lot, yeah, you'll get it where they're yeah, you gotta, gotta let go of the clutch a little bit to find your gear, yeah, yeah you'll hear it, tong, it goes in there and the drive shaft will shake. You get in a lineup, you know if a guy's got a dog ring training or not right away. The thing is, the input shaft was awful hot when I pulled it out of there, so. Pull that clutch part. Is it twisted at all? Yeah, mm -hmm. it might look a bit. Awesome. Yeah, there's nothing new. Nothing new. Well, I'm going to find that pivot ball that I got in my hand. Yeah, I'll pull the bell out now. So, we found the problem. And this one was surprising. Pa used up all five of his guesses and didn't guess it, but as you can see, now I just had that thing in my hand and the spline didn't look bad, but apparently it must have been worse than it looked. But this is the problem. When you can do that, you know, it ain't gonna drive the car. So, 
Apparently she's hooking good on a dirt road to do that. How but, often do you just strip the splines out of a clutch disc on a dirt road? Uh, I've never stripped the splines out of a clutch disc before. So anyway, the tranny's all right. Um, we've ordered a clutch disc and uh, I've ordered a pivot ball so I can make that clutch work a little better. And I reckon uh, we'll fix that crank bolt, push her outside and call it a day. We'll get a disc, we'll throw it back together.